This is Miro Karanha with Our Daily Planet. And today we're really thrilled to have a special guest with us. We have Indonesian minister with us, Luhut Panjaitan, who is the coordinating minister of maritime affairs and investment. And he's in the United States right now and was kind enough to take a little bit of time from his day to speak with us about Indonesia's efforts on climate action and conservation. So thank you so much, minister, for being with us this morning. Thank you, Indika. I wanted to ask, Indonesia is an island nation, and it is one of the most biodiverse places in the entire world and has an abundance of coral reefs, of forests, of wildlife. How does climate change threaten your nation today and going forward? And what are some of the specific ways that your government is addressing the climate crisis? We understand right now the dangers of the climate change. If we don't anticipate this for the next generation of Indonesia, the victim of this is the next generation of Indonesia. So we set up policy on the climate change, the responsibility to the next generation of Indonesia. We don't want them to be a victim, of course, at the end, globally, but we have to look at this one. That's why we are very carefully to manage or to prepare our policy on this. We are understand also rising of sea level, especially what we observe in northern side of Java Island. We see also on the agriculture side, change in the pattern of weather has caused adjustment on the farming season. So I can give you an example right now, this is heavy rain starting this November till next March. It's unusual. You can see also wave in Java Sea. It's like now four, five, six meters. This is also unusual. We have to address uh, several issues in order to, you know, minimize the impact of the climate change toward Indonesia or globally. The number one, I think moratorium on the palm oil. We don't want to expand size of palm oil in Indonesia. Right now we have uh, 14 million hectares. Since three years, four years ago, already moratorium. Strong law enforcement and prevention program. I think this is also make sure this is going very well. And peatland restoration and protection program. I experienced when I was in charge of the forest fire back 2015, a lot of peatland were burned at the time in so many areas, not only in, in Sumatra, but also in Kalimantan and also Papua. Since then, I think you can see the data, you know, from at the time, 2 million hectares burned. Right now, I think last year and this year, maybe only 150,000 hectares, so much less. We have also program starting next year, replanting mangrove. We are the largest mangrove plantation in the world, 637,000 hectares of mangrove for the next four years. That's, I think, the program of government Indonesia to replan. This could help us also to contribute more carbon. We focus this mangrove uh, restoration in Java, Sumatra, and Kalimantan. In Sumatra especially, and Java especially in northern part of Java, like in Jakarta, and Semarang, Brebes, and also somewhere in East Java. Can I ask about mangroves specifically? You know, we talk a lot about nature-based solutions to climate change in our daily planet. And so... What is the specific importance of these ecosystems to Indonesia and why is there such an emphasis on restoring them? Miro, maybe you are aware that we are the largest, like 20% global mangrove, I think, growing in Indonesia. And this also contribution of mangrove like four times compared to the forestry. This could give also a big contribution to the climate change. For us, if we are successful, this mangrove restoration, I think also could create job opportunity, especially in the pandemic uh, time like this, because this is labor intensive. Maybe could uh, create like a few hundred thousand jobs for the you know female workers and also for the fishery restoration program of Pitland. Thank you, Minister, for that. And I wanted to pivot off a point you just made about the pandemic. The world is still very much in the midst of this pandemic, and this virus has really harmed economies across the globe. So how is Indonesia focusing on on, you know, rebuilding your economy and working on economic growth while also keeping your commitments to sustainability. I'm quite happy with uh, what we are doing today to tackle uh, COVID-19, you know, because the last six, three months, you can see the data in Indonesia right now, give it some promising result. But we have to impose the strong regulation about uh, to the family to discipline the people on the, you know, in Indonesia, like um, yeah, using masks, social distancing and washing hands. 
I mean, they uh, have to comply to the health protocol. This is, I think, the big uh, job for us the last six months. But right now, if you go to Jakarta or Bali or somewhere in, uh, you know, in Central Java, like 90 percent, maybe people already wear masks. You know, this is a thing for us. Number two, we have a quarantine in the big city who has big number of positive cases. So everybody are after testing, tracing, and before treatment, then we can send them to the to the quarantine. We don't want them go to the hospital if it is possible. So when they are in quarantine, normally 100% we can heal them. So that's I think we are what we are doing today in Indonesia. The last one, we have to make sure that in the hospital they have the proper medicine, proper treatment, and also proper equipment in order to heal the COVID-19 patient. But the last one, now we prepare about the vaccine. We have a program, hopefully. When we get emergency use authorization, then we can uh, maybe like 1.5 million people vaccinate end of this year. We believe again that COVID-19 and uh, how do we uh, handle economy have to work together. So if we are successful to manage our uh, COVID-19, I think recovery of our economy is going to be faster. Minister, I wanted to also ask, you know, in the global environmental community, there's a lot of focus on restoring natural climate sinks, so whether on land or in the ocean. And so I wanted to ask, what are some of the specific actions the Indonesian government is taking to conserve some of these sinks, such as coral reefs and fisheries and forests, and particularly in pristine areas like the Birdhead region of Indonesia. Two, nearly three years ago, Washington Post claimed that the uh, Citarum River in Java is the dirtiest river on earth, the dirtiest river. Now, if you go there, it's totally different. Three years ago, you can walk on the river because of so dirty. You know? Today, you can swim. Wow, that's incredible. So after two and a half years. Because we make it massive operation over there, we deploy military and police to clean up the river. And also we discipline the people over there on the Chitarum River. And they respect to this and we have to educate them the importance of this. And if you look at again this one, now much better. I'm confident on it now. Number two, if you look at now marine debris, we are working very hard on that. UN also claim us as champion on this and we work also with the uh, World Economic Forum. We work around the clock to tackle the marine debris. The third one, waste to energy program. This is also part of the program to clean up our area. The next question maybe, uh, do you think this is enough? No. Still need some cooperation because I don't think that this can be done by Indonesia alone. Have to be global problem. That's I think one of the discussion last January. I told them, we're not only talking, talking. Now how action because everybody understand already the problem. Mm -hmm. This country have to share what they're doing. If in your country don't have problem, maybe you have to share your finance to support some other countries who has a problem about this. So if we can do it together, I mean, collectively, I believe then we can save this planet, we can save also the environment. Yeah, that's such an important point that the climate crisis really isn't a nation by nation issue. It's all of our problem to solve. So here in the United States, we just had an election and there's a lot of political change happening in the coming weeks. And so I wanted to ask, what would you like U.S. climate leaders to know about Indonesia's commitment to the climate crisis? And furthermore, how would you like to work going forward with U.S. businesses and civil society and our government to tackle some of these pressing issues? Our uh, obligation to the Paris Agreement, I think is like 29%. Mm -hmm. This is, I think, that our, our uh, agreement. But then with the support of the international community, community and also with the situation today, I think we can go even higher than that. Citarum River, for instance, we plan seven years time to clean up, but now two and a half years, nearly 80%. Wow. So this one also with the mangrove, with the peatland, with the coral reef, with the forestry program, with the seaweed, I think we can move much faster than that. That's, I think, our, uh, our uh, program, uh, Miro. That's incredible. And I think that's a, a really good example for the rest of the world to follow, especially in, in terms of these nature-based climate solutions, which I know with the delayed CBD meeting, that's going to be a, a big focus for the global community going forward. So Minister, thank you so much for taking the time today. This is a really informative conversation, and I know that our readers and listeners are really going to be interested in the actions that your nation is taking to combat this, and yeah. you know, I hope you have a good rest of your stay in the United States. We hope to talk to you soon. 
Thank you, Miro. If I may, last a message from us. Yes. Uh, don't hesitate. Indonesia care very much on the environment. So people, some people, maybe or some group or NGOs from Western country thought that we don't care. We care very much. Not only the environment, but we care also the next generation of Indonesia. Again, if you make a wrong policy today, the first victim is my grandchildren, mm -hmm. our grandchildren in Indonesia, then the rest of the world. So we're not going to see the victim of wrong policy from us going to hit our next generation. So we have a lot, very much responsibility to make Indonesia or globally become a very uh, friendly. Thank you, Miro. Thank you so much, Minister. We'll talk to you soon.